Welcome to the Beauty Pro Wellness Podcast, the podcast that mixes wellness with personal development tips and info specifically for beauty industry professionals. I'm your host, Abby O'Sullivan, a longtime esthetician and lash artist turned wellness coach. With burnout and health issues on the rise amongst my beauty pro friends, I know we need a space to come together to learn, support each other, and get the push you need to take care of your health. Together, we'll dive into topics like mobility training for a less achy body, managing stress in the chaos of running a business and handling clients, setting up your self-care routines, and so much more. You deserve to feel as good as your clients do when they leave you. Let's make time for you, starting with this podcast. Hey there, welcome back to the Beauty Pro Wellness Podcast. Today's episode is all about making bookkeeping and your finances easier for you in your beauty biz, especially if you're a smaller business or you run your business solo and you find keeping track of your finances and the numbers a little bit challenging or overwhelming. This is an episode for you. My guest today is Megan Smith and she is an esthetician turned bookkeeper. She realized that she had a passion for bookkeeping while she was running one of her first businesses, a handmade makeup company. She then opened up a bookkeeping firm specializing in the beauty industry. She found that there was a great need to help independent beauty pros learn to manage their finances. She started Solo Beauty Pros, where she helps beauty professionals just like you learn how to manage your finances so you can grow a more profitable business. And she has just released a course called Pretty Profitable that takes you through the creation of all of the important business things, setting up your accounts and tracking your finances with a really awesome spreadsheet. Um, She is dropping a lot of wisdom and knowledge and just basics for you on today's podcast. And we're going to actually talk all about her course so you can hear about that in the episode. I'm really excited for you to hear this because financial health is important to our overall health. Knowing our numbers in our business is just going to make everything so much clearer for you and make you feel more confident in running your business. So please welcome Megan to the podcast. Welcome, Megan. Welcome to the podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. So we're going to be talking about finances, financial health and numbers and that that's important to, this is a beauty pro wellness podcast, but that's important to our overall health because if you're stressed about your numbers, stressed about your finances, don't know what's going on, that can create a lot of mental and emotional stress that can lead to physical stress. Or if you're you know, trying to grow your business and you're just feeling overwhelmed by this, that's that's really important to talk about. So I was really happy to stumble upon you in a random, well, actually my sister <laughs> stumbled upon you in a different group. And then I was like, I got to go be friends with her. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yay for, you know, social media connections. <laughs> yes, it's great. <laughs> so tell us a bit about your background, like how you came to be helping beauty pro beauty professionals with their, uh, their finances and their numbers. Sure. So it's taken a few steps to get here, but I'll try to get through it quickly. So back in 2008, um, I got my esthetician license and at the time, um, I did kind of struggle working as an esthetician. I moved, um, to a different state and the economy wasn't great. The aesthetics industry wasn't as big as it is now. 2008. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I worked briefly as an esthetician then, mostly like friends and family doing facials, skincare and waxing, things like that. But ultimately, I ended up starting a handmade makeup company. And that was in 2012. And I ran that for about five years. And it was when I was running that business that I found I really enjoyed doing bookkeeping, which is something that most business owners hate. So yeah. Um, I actually love to sit down and, you know, get into QuickBooks and do all the things. And so um, when my son was born, I actually ended up temporarily closing that business. Um, We were also building a house at the same time, but then I just never ended up opening it again. So I stayed home with him for a few years and then I decided that I was ready to do something. And I had heard that 
virtual bookkeeping was a thing, which I had not heard about before. Yeah. That's so cool. mm-hmm. yeah, I was so excited about it. I did some research. I took a lot of courses and got certified. And then I opened my bookkeeping firm in 2021. And I decided to specialize in the beauty industry because I'm passionate about it. I like working with the beauty industry and I do have to have you know some knowledge and experience. So that's what I decided to do with the bookkeeping company. And then while running that business, I found that there are just so many independent beauty professionals that really needed help with their finances, but they just weren't ready to hire a bookkeeper yet, which Mm -hmm. is totally understandable. And so I decided that I wanted to do something to help them. So I started another company called Solo Beauty Pros, where I really focus on teaching Mm -hmm. independent beauty professionals how to manage their finances. I love that. So cool. (laughs) You know, see a need and like fill it with what you love doing. (laughs) Yes. And that you're good at. Would you say that you have like a passion for for numbers and I do. Yeah. (laughs) Where where does that so where does that stem from? Does it stem from just kind of getting to do it for yourself as a business owner? Or do you feel like it comes from somewhere else? So I've always loved just business in general. Um, Mm -hmm. I've known since I was 14 that I wanted to be a business owner. And I originally went to school for entrepreneurship and small business management. Oh, cool. And I just, I don't know. I love business. I love helping businesses. I really love looking at the numbers to see, you know, the story they tell and, you know, what's going on in the company and what you can do to, you know, improve their numbers. Yeah. It's not, you know, I like to look at past, you know, just a report of numbers and really, you know, go beyond that and see what's Mm -hmm. going on and what can be done to make it better. Wow. I really like that. That's neat. (laughs) I didn't realize that was your like educational background. So you're really bringing that, like, it's kind of a full circle thing there. (laughs) Yes, it is. It's like, I've done so many different things. And at times I feel like, what am I doing with my life? I have so many different, you know, things doing going on, but it's all kind of come together. So Mm -hmm. it's been great. Yeah. I mean, I, I can personally relate to feeling that way as well. Like how many passions do I have to have or businesses do I need to open before I figure out what I like really want to do? And then just coming to terms with, I like doing these few specific things and they kind of revolve around the same core value, but they, they are kind of different things. And I'm like, and that's okay. And it's very full circle. So (laughs) yeah, it's great. The world that we live in, like, especially with the internet, you can really find a passion and find some way to help people and create a business out of it. It's yeah, great. absolutely. I mean, I've loved diving into the virtual assistant world, which is that very mm-hmm. broad umbrella where, where you then also found a niche. And so it's just, mm-hmm. it's like, wow, look what we can do. <laughs> you can, <laughs> yeah. you can learn anything. You can build any type of business and you can help so many people, like not just in your area. Like, right. I mean, you would be like hitting the salons, like, Hey, do you want to Looking like, <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna help you, you know, like, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously, but, um, but yeah. you don't have to, if you don't want to, right. <laughs> it's amazing. amazing. I, yeah. I have a CPA that I kind of mentor with here in the town that I live in. And I met with him one time and I was talking to him about one of my clients in Washington. And he was like, you have a client in Washington? Like he's an older gentleman. So yeah, he doesn't, like, he's not on the internet. I'm like, called yeah, the like, internet, sir. You, you can have clients anywhere. Yeah. So like, this is maybe like kind of a dumb question that I just thought of, but what would be the difference between somebody who is doing your bookkeeping and like an accountant? Sure. That's um, a question I get asked a lot. So an accountant, they do a lot of tax work. Um, I guess I should start with bookkeepers. So Bookkeepers, they deal with like the day-to-day transactions. So categorizing your transactions, your income, and like creating your profit and loss. And then an accountant, they deal with like the tax side. So dealing with like your estimated taxes and your tax returns. Of course, an accountant can do can do both. Mm-hmm. Um, but generally, um, it's going to cost more to have an accountant do your bookkeeping. So it can be beneficial to have both. It's also good to have two sets of eyes on your books just to make sure that nobody's, you know, missing anything. Yeah. But they deal more with taxes. Bookkeepers don't usually. I mean, you can have a bookkeeper that does taxes, but typically you would have an accountant for that. Yeah. So I've, I've used an accountant for just like tax preparation and Mm -hmm. then I am my own bookkeeper. 
And yeah. I find it very valuable to think about outsourcing that mind numbing task for myself, because that is right. not <laughs> something that I enjoy, <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> you know, and that I procrastinate. So, and mm-hmm. I feel like that's completely transparent on us. I'm just like, I don't really mm-hmm. love to deal with it, even though I'm trying to be better about that. And like, money dates or whatever. And I do, Mm -hmm. I'm much better than I (laughs) used to be. That's for (laughs) sure. Because I need, because I needed to be, I needed to be then, but that Mm -hmm. wasn't, I mean, this is so common. Like this isn't, this isn't taught in aesthetics or cosmetology school. Like their main purpose is to help you pass the state board. And every state has a different number. Most of there's, I would say the majority are around the same amount, but some have very different requirements for the education needed and hours needed. So if you're in Florida getting like 250 hours, that's nothing. There's no time to talk about anything business related in that mm-hmm. educational time frame. Um, right. But like in Missouri, it's, are we 700 or 750, something like that? It's been a little while, but still, I mean, they get a lot of extras. I happen to know a teacher at one of the schools here and it's a very good school. They get a lot of extras like service wise, but you know, these people thinking like, they're just going to go off and start on their own and the amount of information, like what they're going to find out the reality of that pretty quickly. So unless you Mm -hmm. were brought up, like within your family home, or you have a natural interest in finances, that might be something that kind of hits you in the face. Like once you get out on Mm -hmm. your own, that you have to deal with this, you have (laughs) to deal with it. It's real. Like as a solo beauty printer, like you have to deal with it. Or if you own a salon or if you want to grow in any type of way, um, what are it, and it can be, it can be very overwhelming. So what are the, some of the common, um, like maybe not mistakes, but like common mistakes or confusions or things that beauty professionals might be missing when it comes to their finances? and their numbers. The most common thing that I see that kind of, kind of creates an issue and just makes managing your finances more difficult is mixing business and personal. So I think, you know, most people know that they need a business account and they set up a business account, but it really needs to be used strictly for business. And I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of times it just kind of gets mixed, you know, personal stuff gets Mm -hmm. mixed in and that just makes it really hard to keep it separate and know your true numbers and really knowing your true numbers is important. And I yeah. know that a lot of people don't really see the value, the value in it because they don't kind of have the the education of how to read the numbers. And yeah. so they don't see the value of, of that. Separating it and looking at it. It's pretty important mm-hmm. come tax time and it does make your life a yeah. lot easier. I didn't, yeah. that's something I didn't have. I mean, I was, I was so slow for like the first couple of years that that wasn't like I don't know. I was just like, let me just do some lashes and pet some faces. Like, cool. Getting divorced. <laughs> yeah. Like I didn't have any, you know, say in, or I wasn't involved in our finances mm-hmm. because I was never like invited, but I also didn't really ask, you know, so it just takes some self-responsibility there. So like when I was, when then, then when I was divorced, I was just like, I don't know, I'm still doing the same shit for a while <laughs> until, <laughs> until I was like, Oh, I should be doing this. Like I got, um, I was working in a spa where the owner's husband had an, a, he had an, a, an accounting business at that time. And so he was really helpful and very nice to like, get me kind of on a better path there and get started doing some, you know, just like helpful things for my business. Um, so I was mm-hmm. lucky for that, but yeah, there was definitely like flying by the seat of my pants type shit happening for a while. <laughs> yeah. It's <seems> pretty common. Yeah. <laughs> it is. It's so common. And you know, the thing is a lot of times we're buying things for a business, you know, at a place like target where you could mm-hmm. be buying business stuff. You could yeah. be buying personal stuff. I'm not going to remember like a week later, let alone months mm-hmm. later when you're doing taxes, whether it was a business expense or not. And if you're just kind of if you keep your receipts, you can, of course, you know, go through all your receipts, but really who wants to do that? Yeah. But also you could just be guessing. And at that point you run the risk of one, either missing a business deduction, which you don't want to do because you end up paying more in taxes. You want yeah. to make sure that you're getting every single deduction yeah. recorded so that you don't have to pay more than you need to in taxes, or you run the risk of saying it was a business expense. And then if you get audited and you were wrong, then you have to go back and pay that money yeah. plus interest and penalties. So it's just yeah. super, um, 
you know, helpful to just kind of get it all separated. And, you know, even if you're not, even if you don't have QuickBooks set up, just simply having it separated so that when you, you know, go to do your taxes and stuff, you, you know, what you spent on your business. Mm -hmm. and, Makes and it all it a little bit, <laughs> a lot of it, a little bit easier when mm -hmm. that comes around for someone who is starting in the industry or starting their business, or maybe they're just trying to get a grasp on their finances. Besides having a separate business account, what else would you like suggest for them? Maybe so maybe if they're kind of starting to get their wrap their head around their numbers and stuff, like what would you suggest that they start with or look at? So I actually recommend just a spreadsheet for like tracking your finances. QuickBooks can um if you don't take the time to really learn QuickBooks and use it correctly, you're most likely going to use it incorrectly. Mm -hmm. And that can just, that can cause a lot of issues. You know, QuickBooks, you know, they have all these little prompts that say, do this and do this, and they make it seem really easy. But if you, if you don't really know what you're doing, then you can quickly <laughs> yeah. have issues. So yeah, I always recommend if you're starting out, just, just a spreadsheet with, you know, how much money you had coming in, how much money you spent. Um, ideally where it went so you can, you know, analyze that and see where you're spending your money and then how much you have left. You really ultimately want to know your profit. That's the number that you want to know. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Or, or loss. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully profit, but it could be less. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, when you're first starting a business, like, well, I, I've always said lashes is a pretty high return investment because our supplies, like once you buy once you buy your stuff, if you're not into skincare lines and retail and, and all of that, it's pretty high return. So having mm -hmm. those deductions and knowing like where everything is going, I mean, say somebody is just like every time a brand has a sale and they're like, Oh, better grab some mm -hmm. supplies. You could be looking to grow, but maybe you're spending way too much in product. Like you don't need mm -hmm. all that right. product. And here, mm -hmm. like if you, if you're not looking, then you don't know. Yeah. 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 And you just have money sitting there not getting used to when you could be you know, mm -hmm. investing it in things that could grow your business rather mm -hmm. than, um, you know, like 18 certifications <laughs> that you actually don't need. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and that's another thing, you know, a lot of times, um, I see, you know, when I'm going in and I have a new salon and I'm categorizing everything, you know, they don't realize how much they're spending on, you know, like the education and the coaching and because it's a big mm -hmm. thing right now and it's great. It helps a lot of people, but you do have to kind of keep track of how much you're spending and whether it's, um, bringing money back in, if it's, if mm -hmm. it's worth the investment. Yeah. I've even seen actually where I was in a business and then like, it was just comparing a couple different businesses recently where, and this is such a strange example, but even like the bathroom setup in like the soap dispensers and the kind of like bulk supply toilet paper and all of that versus going to Sam's or Walmart and getting like the cushy stuff and getting, <laughs> you know, fancy soap and the amount that each of these businesses could be going through of those really simple, like basic supplies. <laughs> and like, maybe mm -hmm. not every solopreneur has to worry about that, but it just got me thinking, like, I wonder what the difference in the costs are, because if this business, like I understand wanting to have nice toilet paper for your, <laughs> for your business, but at the same time, like that's a place where you could potentially save. And especially when you're mm -hmm. new, it's like kind of looking for all those ways that you can, that you can save your right. money to like put back into the business or whatever. You yeah. Need to do. <laughs> yeah. Like, you could put it in your pocket. <laughs> you could yeah, <laughs> um, invest it in advertising to bring more money yeah. in. You could, there's so many more things you could do with it than yeah. you know, spend it on toilet paper. <laughs> save like your $5 a month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> put it in an interest bearing <laughs> savings account and make some money on it. <laughs> yeah. Like I know that's so random, but I was like, I just, because I've been in both of these businesses pretty like intimately. So I was just like, Oh, hmm, that's really interesting. I wonder how much they spend in like candles and stuff. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like I'm not trying to do all that. I work in a smaller room. I'm not trying to burn candles all day. That would be like way too much going on. So you have been working with some people or have provided them like your products for a little bit for a little mm -hmm. while now. Okay. Yes. Cause you've been, have you been testing your course and your information and spreadsheets and all of that with people? Yeah. So the, the course that I have in the spreadsheet, I have been testing it for 
a month or two. Um, cool. I've been kind of rolling it out as I get stuff done. You know, they they go yeah. through it. And yeah, it's got some really great feedback. Um, yeah, that's what I was curious about Sunday. was what are people, what are some of the beauty pros that are using your, your course, your spreadsheet? Um, what are they coming back with to you? Like what kind of feedback? Yeah. So I had one that said this spreadsheet is gold. And she was like, no, no. Now I know why um, I never have any money in my salon account. And um, because she, you know, she said, I never have money in there and I didn't know where it was going. And I put it all in a spreadsheet and I'm like, oh, like this is where it's going. Like, yeah. you know, so now she can reduce some of those expenses. And I think her, she had said that she was taking pay before accounting for expenses. And so really seeing how much she was spending in expenses showed her that she was kind of taking more out of the business for her pay than really her business could afford. And that's kind of what the, what the issue for her was. Interesting. Um, and so yeah, cool. the spreadsheet is just really detailed. So that's been a lot of the feedback was that um, it's really detailed and provides just a lot of information. So there's a lot of different like charts and graphs because I'm very visual and, and I know a lot of people in the beauty industry are also really visual. And mm -hmm. so I put like charts and graphs so you can look at the numbers that way rather than just a report with a whole bunch of numbers. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love <laughs> yeah. that because I think it's, I mean, I'm kind of like, I should probably learn it this way, but I love being able to see that visual too. So good for you for mm -hmm. including that. That's really yeah, helpful. I love it. So that's a great segue into telling us about your course. So just give me like, give me the whole thing. I just want to hear all about <laughs> it. Detail. Tell our, tell our listeners about it. <laughs> Sure. So I created a course and a spreadsheet that's designed specifically for independent beauty professionals. And the course goes through all the way from getting set up. We talk about LLCs and EINs and different bank accounts and putting your information into a point of sale, you know, rather than, you know, just using Venmo. And then mm -hmm. we walk through the spreadsheet. We talk about what bookkeeping is, some important terms. And then we like I go through a month's worth of bookkeeping to show you how to do it. And then I go through how, as a bookkeeper, I would read these numbers to give you know the business owner feedback on what they can do to improve the profitability of their business. We talk about estimated quarterly taxes, even, you know, what do we do with all these receipts? And, mm -hmm. you know, how long do I have to save stuff? Oh yeah, and that's even, a good one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and even there's a, a little workshop on, um, getting organized because I found that the more organized I am, the more likely I am to do something. And so really just kind of setting your stuff up to be easy. The course is really about making your bookkeeping easy so that it's not overwhelming and it's not stressful and mm -hmm. you <laughs> will hopefully have the motivation to do it. <laughs> yeah. I love that so much. So it's videos and then a spreadsheet and then is there support included with that? Yeah. So if you have you know any issues with the spreadsheet, we have a support email that you can reach out to. And then I also have a Facebook group yeah. that it's just for solo beauty pros in general. But yeah, you can always ask bookkeeping questions in there. I don't do taxes, but I do have a girl that does taxes for beauty industry that kind of helps out. So cool. Yeah. yeah. And you're active in that group. So I've, yes. I'm in it, everyone. So <laughs> I know <laughs> she's active in that group. And I feel like, I mean, you can, you can really like active beyond like what other people are doing in the group, because sometimes people are just kind of in the group hanging out, but you're actually like introducing <laughs> and welcoming people like yeah. <laughs> frequently. Yeah. So I love that. So good. That's so good. You know, it's a great resource for people. Yeah. I plan to start doing some, I've been so focused on trying to get this course finished up that yeah. I, I have so many plans to do in that group. So many things planned to do in that group, like different informational videos and things like that. And really talking about, you know, why you should be focused on profit instead of income and, you know, do I need to be doing estimated taxes? So just kind of answering some, some questions that I get a lot. So yeah, cool. hopefully there will be a lot more coming in that group. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. I mean, when you've got a course to birth, it takes <laughs> a lot of time and brain power and, and energy. Yeah. Um, but now it's done. I mean, congratulations on that. So Thanks. I'm excited. It for was, it. yeah, 
It was a lot more than I, I thought it was going to be a lot more work than I thought. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? Like, now. yeah, I was going to say like, <laughs> now it's done. And then if you ever have to update it, probably pretty easy to do that. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the great yeah, thing about some... that type of work. And, and like the way that you've presented it business-wise, it's an evergreen piece of, you know, content or product really is what I should say. Yeah. I've had some people ask for a course um, teaching QuickBooks for beauty pros. And I'm like, that mm. would be great. I just need to wrap my mind around doing it. You're like, but I just created one so that you don't have to use that. (laughs) Give me a second. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I think I will do that because I know a lot of people want, you know, to to be automated. You know, QuickBooks is automated. But, you know, if you're a bigger salon and you're running payroll, I do definitely suggest something like QuickBooks. But as an independent beauty professional where, you know, you don't have payroll, you don't have a ton of transactions, it doesn't really take much time to enter those transactions in, you know, rather than in QuickBooks categorizing. And it's not just categorizing in QuickBooks. A lot of people think you categorize the transactions and you're done. (laughs) Yeah, That's not it. Like you have to reconcile your accounts. And in the beauty industry, you do have to make adjustments to your numbers because, Most of the time, the deposits coming in are like they have the fees withdrawn and the sales tax included. So you have to make adjustments. That sales tax needs to be moved to a liability account. You need to adjust your sales numbers back up to what they were before the fees were taken out. Then you need to also record the fees. So there's a lot more to it than people realize. And so that's why, yeah, I I do suggest if, you know, you have a simple a simple business, just keep the bookkeeping simple. Mm-hmm. That's perfect. Sound yeah. bite right there. <laughs> like just keep yeah. it simple. If, if, like if you don't need to go into the weeds, like with a system, like totally yeah. keep it simple. I love that. Yeah. And they QuickBooks just keeps raising the price. So save yourself the, I think the <laughs> lowest one is like 30 is up to like $35 a month now for the, yeah. the cheapest one. Well, you, you could literally like just invest in your course and then have it Forever and it's low cost. Like, I mean, I feel like that's such a great, I was looking at it earlier. So it's like such a good value. Um, <laughs> yeah. So if someone is feeling overwhelmed or stressed out, or maybe even like embarrassed about their knowledge or lack of with their finances and their numbers, what is something that you would share with them? What's something you would tell them? Um, I would say that, you know, it's nothing to be embarrassed about. Almost all business owners start that way. You know, everybody goes into business with a passion and that's what you're focused on is your passion and doing what you love. And finances, most of the time is something that just takes the backseat and, you know, it's, it's okay. And you're on the right track if you're ready to, to get things in order. So let's just do it. Yeah. Love it. Let's just do it. Let's just go. Yeah. yeah. The longer you wait, yeah. you know, the harder it's going to be to catch up. <laughs> totally. Let's just do it. Yes. The <laughs> longer you wait, like the more work is going to be involved and it's just going to feel like even more to work through. So, and you're missing out on that time that you could be, you know, keeping up with it and looking at the numbers and improving your business. You're missing out on that chance. So, mm-hmm. yeah. I feel like that's a really, like, just an important message overall. You know what though, let me circle back because you mentioned Venmo earlier and I'm in a lot of the Facebook groups and I just see a lot of, I've actually never used Venmo specifically for my business and I've never really wanted to because I I mean, for the longest time, they didn't even have any business thing, like a side of it. So it just looks Mm -hmm. like personal income coming through. Do you have some wisdom to share around using (laughs) a platform like that for for your business income? Sure. So the thing that I see with Venmo is a lot of business owners are using the personal Venmo so that they're not paying the fees, but that can, you know, they catch on to that. And then I've heard of them holding onto your money and, you know, you just don't want that. So if you're using the business one and you're paying the fee, you know, I mean, that's fine. The only thing is it makes your bookkeeping a little a little bit more difficult. Like in the course, we go through how to make it easy. And the easiest thing to do is make sure that all of your sales are going through one place. Mm -hmm. So, you know, like Figaro, Gloss Genius, Square, Square, there's ones here all the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that way when you're, so the spreadsheet is set up so that there's an income section. It's actually called the sales summary. So you just run your sales report and put those numbers in. You're not going through line by line for deposits to put that in the spreadsheet. You just put your sales for the month in one place. Okay. And so if you're um, running all of your 
uh, sales through one place, then you only have to pull run one report. But if you're doing like separate transactions through Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, anything like that, yeah. you then have to go to those separate places and get that information. So yeah, just, you're basically chasing it all down and then having to sort through yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And, and like, I just want to say that when you're taking credit cards, people, credit card fees are just a freaking fact of life. It's a cost mm-hmm. of doing business. It's a cost of business. Yep. Don't be like do <laughs> cash only, cash only. Like, yes, we all love cash, but that doesn't mean that it's yeah. just like free money. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You still got to pay taxes. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I mean, like, I'm not even, I'm like, should I say it out loud? Because it's a podcast. And I like, guess I've kept tips, but like <laughs> before, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you can't, you can't yeah. do that shit like all the time. Yeah. You can't run a business like, properly like yeah. that. You have to mm-hmm. still report it like no matter what. I mean, right. If she, you know what? Take that information with whatever, however you will, because you're going to do you, but just know <laughs> that <Yeah. laughs> the government is always watching you guys. <laughs> yes. And they're getting, yeah. I mean, they're always coming up with new ways to to crack down on people. Yeah. And then if you're in a business where you're taking cash, you're just more likely to get audited. It's just a fact of life. If your business takes cash, it's more likely. Now, I mean, I don't have any clients that have been, and I don't know how common it is. I just know that it yeah. does increase your chances. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and yeah. no, like you don't want to have to go through that. What a pain in the ass, mm-hmm. just in general. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even if yeah. you're like, I'm on the up and up, like it's, it would be a pain in the ass. So just like, let's do what we can to just keep things like going smoothly and not bring like undue stress into your life. I mean, as much as possible. So I feel like that's mm-hmm. a really great delegating. This is, this is a form of outsourcing. This is a form of mm-hmm. delegation and not only helping you wrap your head around your numbers and like really I don't like just see what's going on and feel really good mm-hmm. about that. But it's also just a way to outsource some of your, your brain energy and things that maybe you're not as knowledgeable in. And I freaking love that. Like any way, <laughs> <laughs> any way a person who is busy running their business, trying to live a life, like maybe you have family where you just don't want to, you know, have to worry about things so much, like any way that you can take a little bit off your plate this is certainly a very good way to do that, especially as common as it seems that people have a lot of questions about it or maybe feel challenged by it. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast and sharing so much about well, like finances, numbers, and just kind of getting these, these basics out to people. Like, let's talk about this more people. Let's get like involved in our businesses we're business owners. So we don't just get to play with lashes and faces and then collect money. Like there's just a little, unfortunately, Mm -hmm. like that would be so amazing. (laughs) Right. Uh, But there's just like a little bit more to it than that. And so I really appreciate you coming on to share your, your knowledge with us. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. So tell everyone where they can connect with you via like social media. Sure. So solo beauty pros is my handle on social media. And I also have a Facebook group. The main part is solo beauty pros, and then it has support for her stylist after it, but that's a great place to come and ask questions and network with other people. Mm-hmm. And then my website is solobeautypros.com. I love it. And your course is available for purchase now, isn't it? It is. Yes. yes. <laughs> a couple days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Everything will be linked in the show notes every Wednesday. So you can go find that super easy. Go connect with Megan, go join her Facebook group. That's an incredible free resource right there. Go check out the course. If you're needing some help, I, and yeah, thank you so much for coming on today. Thank you so much. This was fun. Thank you for tuning into the Beauty Pro Wellness Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, hit subscribe so you don't miss out on new episodes, leave a review, and share with your friends in the beauty industry. Beauty Pro Wellness Podcast is produced and crafted by Wonder Podcast Productions.